I fabricated a temporary bracket out of some spare aluminium sheet that I had and a piece of wood. And so that fits nicely. It's about a two millimeter gap between the, sw the two swing arms. And if you're wondering about the colors right now, it's because I've done a bit of cleaning and some surface rust treatment on the inside. And same thing with the swing arm. So that's just some temporary primer I've got on there. And you can see I've got a bolt temporarily through the shock mount and the shock itself. So that lines up well. I'm happy with the distance. And now you can figure out how to mount this thing. So this, and again, this is halfway through painting. I'm just doing a mock-up. This is the original center stand from the Vespa. And it's a strange asymmetrical design with mounting points here, here, and then back there. And even more annoyingly is that they're not all in the same plane. Um, so I need to find a good spot for this. And you know, is that too low to the ground when it's hanging like that? Um, not sure. I mean, obviously, it's not like I'm going to be going to massive bumps, but I don't want that to scrape. So, I don't know. I might have to go maybe a side stand route. Not quite sure yet. Because this thing is just awkward. Because right, this is already pretty low. In itself, so not a whole lot of room for maneuvering. I could get it up a bit higher. I mount it up forward. So maybe that's the way to go. Um, yeah, not quite sure yet. So I think what I'm decided to do is see there are these three holes here. I could theoretically use to mount this center stand. If I cut cut this down a bit, so cut off this piece here and that piece there, then that'll give me probably a better mounting surface, really. Um, and I'll still use these front mounts and then just use. Probably that middle one, maybe the two sides. But definitely that middle one. That should be enough. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Time to get the hacksaw out. So I've started cutting this hacksaw because I don't have an angle grinder yet. I've been meaning to buy one. This is a good excuse to buy one. But oh, hacksaw, metal fatigue. There's one done. Okay, and both sides are off. <sighs> that was a lot easier. Let's grind that down a bit and then test fit again, see if I can get a better fit underneath the scooter. So this is my temporary bracket to join the two swing arms and for the uh, center sand to mount to. So we just got a couple pieces of wood drilled a hole through for the front mount. The uh, back of the stand is going to mount through there, um, and this should line up with the two swing arms. Yeah, so that should be good. Obviously, the final product will be in metal, all steel, so a lot stronger than this temporary thing, but this should be good enough to at least test fit it and see how we go. So the center stand goes on here. that and again I'm still in the middle of painting that that'll be all nice and black but this it's gonna go in here and then another bolt down through the middle so there's mocked up uh, first impression is that that kick sands way too low but I've got some room to maneuver um, it's basically down by about an inch 25 mil where it could be 
so I can fix that. Um, I do want to see if it'll stand on the stand, but I'm probably just going to put the shock on first to add a bit of a stability. All right, the first time I tried putting on the stand, it didn't really work. So I've now removed this 25 mil thick piece of wood to get this mounted up a bit higher. Um, obviously this would be welded on, so there'd be some strength there. It's still a bit low, and these springs have maybe a bit too much play in them, but um, it could be all right. So I'm gonna try putting it up on the stand, see if it works. All right, so we have some success here. It is up on the center stand. Um, I'm not 100% happy with the way it balances. I think it needs to go further to the right side, um, but that's not, it's not too bad actually. So the wheel itself is not exactly centered either, but um, that might have something to do with it. But that's fine, I have room to play with. As you see on this, this part of the swing arm here is quite a bit narrower, so I can adjust the left to right with some washers initially, and then we get a custom sleeve made probably. Um, and obviously I can adjust it as well on the shock side because there's quite a bit of room there. So that's obviously not the permanent bolt, that's just a temporary bolt I put in. Um, but otherwise, I think we're in business. So I'm going to make a 3D model of that bracket with a couple minor adjustments and um, see if I can get it fabricated. So in addition to sorting out the bracket to join this, the, the electric motor swing arm and the Vespa swing arm, I've been also just cleaning things up in general. So especially under here, uh, washed it all down, treated a bit of surface rust, and then just gave it a quick coat of primer and black paint. I'm about to do the same under here. Um, already vacuumed, just getting up some, again, just some surface rust really. But I've removed the wiring harness. I will be salvaging some connectors and things like that from it. Uh, and I've started getting ready to see if the, how I'm gonna make the disc brake work. This is the disc brake from the, um, the new. So ideally I wanna make this work and adapt a Vespa hand to that so it actually matches. But first I gotta make sure everything fits. As far as I know, there was never a, a hydraulic disc brake made for this Vespa, so it's not like I can just retrofit a standard part, but we'll see how to make it work. There's also plenty of room down here to put, um, to mount some brackets to hold the e-throttle, the ECU, and maybe a couple other components. So yeah, making some progress, but it is, this is a bit of the slow stage, just getting everything ready. Um, and also trying to get work done while it's not raining. It's a beautiful sunny day today, but tomorrow it's going to rain all day. So I'm going to try to get as much done as I can while the weather holds. So I've just test fit the, the brake lever from the new on here, and it actually works almost perfectly. Um, the little mount here or the for the uh, the mirror may be a little bit too far this way but um, you know if that's the only issue then that's great I'll just maybe I'll just even just plug up the mirror hole um, but otherwise it works I've been test fitted put in the trim piece on here and the uh, brake cylinder will actually fit the little reservoir there will actually fit behind so I'm getting optimistic about this. So obviously the, the brake lever doesn't match. So I either get the other new brake lever that I have and put it on this side, or 
I get a Vespa handle and put it on this side. I'd rather probably put a Vespa handle on. It's a question of whether or not it'll fit. Uh, in theory, they both, you know, they do the same thing, which is pushing the cylinder here. Um, so we'll see. So everything's cleaned up and just about ready to start installing the new components, quite literally. I decided to remove the brake lever and basically just paint it black. Um, I messed around with the Vespa lever and the new lever and they weren't going to work on each other so um, I think just painting it black should make it work. It will be exactly the same shape but it will be close enough. There's a progress update so I've been working on the wiring harness. So I'm using the, the new wiring harness um, and basically I had to do a lot of cutting of plugs and splicing on the Vespa plugs to make everything work, work with the switch gear. It was all relatively straightforward. I didn't have to do too much in terms of custom modification. Um, just had to kind of figure out for the, essentially for the dash controls, or not dash, but the uh, instrument clusters, um, lighting and things like that, what I actually needed, what I didn't need. That's all set. I've mounted the uh, new display in the glove box. You can see it's, it's perpendicular. I'm not really gonna use it other than just to check the battery levels. So I'm fine for it being there. Um, I'm, I'm also going to mount the USB port from the new in there at some point. I've also painted the Vespa brake uh, lever. So it's gonna be black just like the new lever. Um, and then I'm going to start uh, figuring out where to mount things like the throttle control here, ECU, everything like that. There's plenty of room. Uh, this disgusting looking seat cushion is the seat cushion. It's fully dry now. I'm going to be reupholstering it. Uh, I'll probably do that in a separate video to cover that process, which includes also the uh, replacing the rusty bracket and then how I repaired that. The last piece of the wiring puzzle that I need to sort out is just wiring up the speed controller. So on the old the first generation N1S like I had, it has this rotary controller to go between first, second, and third. Now these aren't gears because it's all single speed, but what it is are preset uh, speed limits, right? Um, second, I remember, was about 20 miles an hour, and then third was essentially unrestricted, but in stock N1S form that meant 32 miles an hour. So these, this rotary control is basically is connected to these three wires here. And when it's in essentially first, uh, first gear or first speed rather, um, this white and black wire is con essentially connected to the white and yellow wire. When it's in second, uh, they're all just independent, none are connected. And when it's in third, the white and black is connected to the white and red. On this switch I got, and this basically is, uh, well, it's a light switch, as you can tell by the, the graphics. This goes actually in to here. So stock, the LX50 that I, so at least the 2011 model, just is a blank plate there. But originally, in older models, the switch went in there. Because of daytime running light laws, basically, this was you don't need a switch to turn the lights on and off. So, this has three positions one, two, three. So, you think, great, I can just line everything up with these. Unfortunately, the way these are connected is that in what is first, all three of these contacts are connected, in second, the, essentially the second and the third contacts connected, and in third, they're all independent. So I've come up with a solution, which I hope will work, involving a one normally closed relay, one normally open relay. Um, I'm gonna wire them up so that basically this will correspond nicely with first, second, third. So I've placed the order for the relays and we'll get that up and there should be enough room in the handlebar area to mount the relays. Um, also here is the 
bracket that I've restored for uh, the seat. And like I said, there's a separate video that'll be made for that where I show how to reupholster and fix um, one of the rusty seat brackets, seat hinges. So. so I used Tinkercad to model the bracket in 3D. As you can see here, it's pretty similar to actually what I mocked up out of wood and aluminium, but again, this is gonna be fabricated out of steel. Um, I took this model and then I emailed it off to a few different companies that do uh, CNC milling and 3D printing and all that kind of stuff. And um, I ended up going with a company called Fractory up in Manchester. And this is what they've produced based upon my original design, which was basically going to be laser cut out of steel and then bent up. Um, the part on the bottom that the center stand uh, attaches to um, will be bolted on. Use those two bolts holes at the go through the top of the bracket. The lead time is about two weeks and that includes shipping and so until then I'm going to continue uh, installing the wiring, get everything ready so that in two weeks I'll be able to bolt it up and then that'll be part three of this series. Stay tuned.